Yes, you read that title correctly. The whole idea of potentially having an Uber union or a Lyft union or basically a rideshare share union is now an actual possibility. You could see right away, Massachusetts ballot question would give Uber and Lyft drivers right to form a union. This is the first time I've seen this and I know, when I posted a video recently about what's going on in Massachusetts, this huge win for drivers that happened, I did have a lot of people comment saying, hey Mark, who cares? Is it Massachusetts? But like I've said, I wanna make this very clear in the beginning of this video, when something happens in one state, it usually does cause an inevitable ripple effect around the country because other states are looking at what other states are doing. So I do wanna mention that, even if you're like Mark, I'm not in Massachusetts, which of course that's one state out of 49, Massachusetts has been making big waves, right? So you can see right here, drivers for ride hailing companies in Massachusetts are pushing ahead with what they describe as a first of its kind ballot question that could win them union rights if approved. This is something I've talked about even last year and I even got a lot of comments. I brought up the idea of having a union for drivers and I actually got a lot of comments of people saying, Mark, it's never gonna happen. You never know, right? And I think this is a big thing that um, there's a landmark shuttleman, like I just did a video about last month, guaranteeing that Uber drivers and Lyft drivers will earn a minimum pay center of $32.50 per hour in Massachusetts, among a lot of other things that are mentioned in this article. And uh, going down here, uh, the uh, Verit, president of the Services Employees International Union, said that tens of thousands of Uber and Lyft drivers working in Massachusetts deserve the collective bargaining benefits of unions. This will be the first in the nation, keep that in mind, to establish a union for drivers this way. The group is working on a similar effort in California. So keep in mind, like I said, if you're like, hey Mark, I'm not in Massachusetts, this is also something that could potentially happen in California or other states. Remember Massachusetts right now, which kind of came out of nowhere, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like is now leading the, the country in terms of like benefits for drivers. I might say now, which is I know a, a bold thing to say, that Massachusetts may be the best state in the country now to drive in, especially after what happened and especially with with what could happen now as a result of this, you know. Um, I've talked about it before, but Attorney Campbell, um, who secured the settlement, which included what she described as an unprecedented package of minimum wage benefits and, and protections, is also backing the ballot question. I mean, why not? It's a strong foundation that can and should be built upon. So going down here, the labor laws in the country aren't ready to take into consideration gig workers. And that's a big issue with Uber and Lyft drivers, like I've talked about. It is... It is a unique category. You're not an employee, really. You're not an independent contractor, although by definition you are, but you're more than just an independent contractor when you look at a lot of things going on. It's a gray area. And so, something in the ballot question would begin to remedy in Massachusetts if voters support the question, which I feel like they will, and drivers ultimately form a union. We believe that workers are workers, all workers deserve a union, a way to come together with their coworkers to have a say in their livelihood. This is gonna be, and can be monumental. If I had to guess, if, you know, obviously who knows what will happen with this ballot, but uh, I could see this being voted for. Honestly, I, I could see this like going through, right? Um, going down here, you know, they basically like interview some drivers talking about like negative things that I've talked about on this channel. For example, um, getting deactivated or account being canceled or other different issues that drivers deal with. And because you're an independent contractor, Uber and Lyft says, oh, Sorry, sorry we deactivated you for two weeks. It was a wrongful deactivation or we wrongfully canceled your account or something negative happened to you, but because you're an independent contractor and you have no rights, no protections, you kind of SOL, you know? Um, and as she said here, right, just in general, that this one driver talking about their issues with Uber and Lyft said, if I had a union, I'd be able to turn to them and work with them, right? And this is a big thing, which I think makes it a little better, but still not perfect, is that under a policy Lyft announced earlier this year, the company said that their goal is to make drivers feel supported and respected when a temporary hold is placed on a driver's account during an investigation. And I will say this, I know Uber talked about this as well. So at least there's now some light being shed on this, but this is a huge issue because yes, I think it's good that they're saying this. Even still, it's like this tricky situation where on one end, there are bad drivers out there. There are bad drivers and there's been reports and this is, you know, this does happen where let's say drivers are caught driving drunk and they should get deactivated, of course, right? Like that should happen or drivers attacking passengers or whatever, that should happen. On the other end though, it is tricky that let's say if, and this happens a lot too, a passenger makes up that the driver is drunk because they want to get revenge because the passenger was doing something and the driver's like, hey, like, you know, basically 
it is the passenger's fault, not the driver's fault. Even if the driver is 100% in the right, is it, it is this odd situation that the driver's like, hey, yeah, I got deactivated for two weeks. Yeah, they gave me my account back, but now one, that's two weeks just gone where I couldn't work. And two, on top of that, now I have talked to drivers who said this to me, now there's, there's this odd anxiety. Every time you go to drive where you pull up the app and you're like, is this going to be the day where I pull it up and this happens again, where I see your account got deactivated again. It's this odd like anxiety that you always now have to worry about, right? And so it's, it is kind of tough to say, right? Um, going down here, um, you know, I mean, there's some, obviously some people opposing this, right? Uh, this one person, Henry DeGroote um, of Boston has driven for both companies off and on for five years, but says the ballot proposal question isn't a fair deal. The, they said that the question doesn't create a democratic system where all drivers have rights. He said no rights are included in the initiative beyond basic uh, collective bargaining, including details on how dues are spent. You can't have a regular union and not let workers have a vote. And I do kind of agree with that to an extent, but I think at least this is a start. I think that's huge. It's, it's a huge, absolute big start, you know, because I'm going to skip down here a little bit. The ballot question, if approved, would define active drivers as those who completed more than the uh, median number of rides in the previous six months. So that is something to kind of keep in mind. You know, once a union signs up 5% of active drivers in a bargaining union, it would get a list of all eligible workers and block any other union from being recognized without an election. So there are some technical things that, you know, at first, a Lyft and Uber union sounds amazing, but there are some technical things that I think we'll have to maybe go more into and see what would happen exactly right in terms of like, is it actually going to be a good thing for drivers or a bad thing? But I think the big thing is this, at least going down here, you know, um, that in the statement after the settlement was announced, Lyft said that the deal resolved a lawsuit that recently went to trial and avoided the need for the ballot initiative campaign this November. Uber also released a statement, uh, excuse me, Uber also released a statement at the time calling the agreement an example of what independent, flexible work with dignity should look like in the 21st century. So, you know, it seems like Uber and Lyft seems to not be debating this that much, which actually is pretty shocking to me because this agreement, like I said before, um, that already happened, that because of this new agreement, like I said, drivers will earn one hour of sick pay per every 30 hours worked and up to a maximum of 40 hours per year under the deal. In addition, the two companies will also be required to pay $175 million to the state to resolve allegations that the companies violated Massachusetts wage and hour laws a substantial majority of which will be distributed to current and former drivers. Again, I think this is huge, right? I mean, there's no other way to word that. I think that, like I've said, even like last year when I was talking about it, like I, I mentioned this in a bunch of videos last year, which is kind of cool to see that, you know, I said that, you know, I felt like we were in like the dark era of Uber and Lyft, if I'd call it that, where drivers are not getting the protection they deserve, wrong for deactivations, getting paid way less. The list goes on and on. I've talked about this in a bajillion videos. And I did say there's gotta be a point where I think things swing upwards where things start to get better because when i first started driving years ago things were pretty good i think it got worse and worse the pandemic was a bit of a wrench in the machine so to speak where tough to say it was good or bad because it was kind of out of our control with the pandemic but now that things are kind of back to normal of course i think almost things got worse in like 2022 2023 now though in 2024 i think things are now finally on the upswing where people are realizing especially legislative bodies and departments being like, wow, you know, drivers are really not getting paid the way they should be being paid and everything. And yes, they are independent contractors, but if you look at a lot of what's going on with them and a lot of the way they're being treated and all this kind of stuff, are they really, you know, and this is why if you saw what happened, like I just mentioned in a previous video, that basically rideshare drivers now are almost this unique category in between employees and independent contractors, where they're basically independent contractors with benefits. And I think that is a sweet spot. I think that's a good idea. But then on top of that, after what just happened in Massachusetts, which is a landmark thing for ride sharing, I guess I, I call it some, I pretty much call it the biggest news ever for ride sharing. And I generally think that because it's, in my opinion, the biggest step forward for drivers getting more benefits than ever before. Now you have this on top of it. So to me, this makes it a pretty much clear cut deal. I mean, it's tough to say exactly, but like that Massachusetts, I think is probably the best state to drive for in the country right now, which is kind of funny because that's, of course, where I started driving. Now I live in LA, but I was living in Boston. I think this is a huge thing. And again, I, like I said, right in the beginning of this video, I know a lot of people might be watching this, maybe either, maybe a bit jealous or maybe a bit like, oh man, well, that's good for them. But like, what about me? Because I don't live in Massachusetts. I think it's 
only a matter of time that if something like this does happen, if the union does go forward, I mean, already Massachusetts took a huge step forward, like I mentioned in the past video, but now you include this, which is a whole other kind of side of that coin that's even better, that makes this whole situation even better with the union. You're talking about a lot of other states, maybe even something federally could happen that are now looking at this saying, huh, well, that's a great thing. If Massachusetts created a union, maybe we can too. If Massachusetts convinced Uber and Lyft to do, you know, um, to add all these benefits, paid sick leave, et cetera, maybe we can too. And granted, I will say, like I also mentioned before, I do understand that ride sharing is, is a very unique industry in the sense that each state is a very different economy, right? I mean, that's true in general, but I think especially with ride sharing that maybe some of these benefits, some states just literally can't afford in terms of Uber and Lyft. Maybe it's not a cop-out to look at both sides. There's always two sides to everything. Maybe it isn't a cop-out to Uber and Lyft, like in Minneapolis to say, oh, we're just going to leave. Maybe they genuinely cannot afford it, that it wouldn't work out mathematically. That I genuinely don't know, to be honest, you know, but I think the fact that this is all happening in Massachusetts, it seems like one thing after another is happening for drivers in Massachusetts in a really positive way. Like I said, it's really kind of putting a big step forward for ride share drivers. And this makes me very kind of excited and also positive because I feel like in a lot of videos I've talked about, and I said this before, it's tricky when I make these videos because I don't want to make them FUD or fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I don't make them, you know, we've all seen YouTube videos of people just rambling on, saying very negative things to create hype or, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But it's also tricky for me, not wanting to make negative videos, but also wanting to be honest. And with Uber and Lyft, it's tough to do both, right? Because if I have to be honest, there is a lot of negative stuff about being a driver, especially with what's going on right now. But with this, this, I think, the first big breadcrumb and many more breadcrumbs, in my opinion, to come. We're going down this path now where I think things are finally on the upswing. And I think now I can finally say, and I think this will not be just the end of this. I think this is the big start for a lot of amazing things to happen for drivers.